All right, guys, we're going to be looking at the Romanov versus the Lima fight from USC Fight Night, um, Glover Teixeira versus Thiago Santos. Um, if you have a chance, check this fight out. It's interesting. Um, on their feet, the Lima had the advantage. On the grappling and on the ground, Romanov had the obvious advantage. So it was a striker versus grappler match in the heavyweight division. So also real quick, this was this is also classified as the first forearm choke submission in the history of the UFC. So it's one reason why we're taking a look at it. Okay, so right off the bat, um, you know, it's towards the end of the fight, obviously. Um, Romanov, also known as King Kong, managed to get the fight to the ground. Um, so he's in half guard right here, top half guard. Um, just take a look at this knee right here. He starts to bring it out over here, okay? This is going to help him isolate this arm right here, okay? So let's take a look there. Right there. See how he he moves the knee over, okay? So he uses his foot first to move to the left. Okay, he moves it over to the left. And then that allows him to shift the knee over into the armpit of uh, the Lima. As you will see right there. Right there, a little, little scooting. Okay, doesn't seem like much, but in grappling, little nuance, uh, little nuances like that, it's it's a big deal. Okay, so obviously he's uh, setting him up for the choke. Okay, he's got the form underneath the chin. Uh, this back leg over here is extended. Um, and he's driving with his weight down. So he's kind of driving at this angle here. Now take a look, his head is not past the Lima's head, okay? So his ear is still underneath the Lima's ear. This is the Lima's ear line, and, his, and Romanov's is still underneath that. That helps drive more weight and pressure into that artery right there. Um, he's got a little bit of life toes over here, a little bit of dead toes. He's trying to sink his weight down and into the forearm. And I see there, he passed out. <laughs> Pretty interesting that position. Um, let's see here. So a couple things, let's rewind that here. A couple things, you know, obviously, rule number one in grappling, always, always, always respect the choke. Delima didn't do so so much there. He, you can see he's trying to push the forearm away to that side like you typically would, but the way how uh, Romanov has the grips, which I'll show here in a second, uh, prevents uh, that from happening. Another thing too here that Delima does, which is a rookie grappling mistake, is that as he's trying to hold on to that half guard above the knee line, which you're supposed to, but because uh, Romanov's leg is extended. He should have used this shin to get into a butterfly hook at the very least. That would have allowed this pressure on the choke to be less and probably get it off of, of his throat. Um, but uh, the Lima decided to hold on to the half guard and try to push that, that form away. This is one reason here why Romanov kept that knee so tight against the armpit. It prevents this elbow from wedging in between that knee and the Lima's ribs, which would have allowed this choke to not be as effective. So again, nuances of the game. And you can see he just keeps getting that game over. So he's using his toes over here. He's got a little bit of life toes here, and he's using his toes on this leg to push into him okay so as you can tell he's kind of pushing up and then he's redirecting the weight down at this angle towards the forearm towards the forearm forearm and into the chin or into the throat right there so now the lima tried to um you know swing his legs over trying to get this knee back to the ground but his base his three points of contact of romanov are solid He's got the leg extended, he's got the shin and the knee right here with the weight, and the third point is into the forearm. Um, he's not going to be shaken off. And the Lima lets go of the half guard, and he tries to point his knees that way as to almost go into a deep half entry, 
But again, the base of Romanov, too strong. Doesn't budge. If anything, it just causes the choke to get in deeper, allows the weight to distribute down into the throat more fully. Um, let's see here. Again, different angle. Right there, he tries to go. So one thing here too is that the way how he has the grips, okay, I said I mentioned earlier. So Delima had this hand trying to push this elbow past this ear over here, past to this side, okay? Uh, almost like a head arm choke attempt. But the way he's got this grip is very interesting. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. I think that's about it. So he's got the choking forearm with the palm up. And he's got that overhook nice and high over Delima's left shoulder with a palm down. So he's got this gable grip on there. So what he's doing is he's tucking in his right elbow into Delima's ribs, which forces this elbow to be kind of pushed in this direction as the right elbow is pulled into this direction. So he's kind of having a little bit of a rotation, but because he's driving it down, his weight down into the forearm, so it's like a little bit of a rotation, but down into the throat. Okay, and see how he's got his head and his shoulders nice and shrugged. His head never goes past the Lima's top of the head. Okay, if that were to be the case, if, let's say if his weight were to be over the Lima's head, that choke would not be effective at all. Okay, uh, he is literally using the Lima's jawbone as um, a point of uh, like a hook. He's he's making his form latch onto that and get stuck in that position. Um, Things that the Lima should have done. Let go of this and bring his elbow inside this this space right in here. And he should have wedged it over as he should have let go earlier and get the butterfly hook with the left leg, the left shin, and that would have been able to release a lot of this tension in here. He would not have been out of trouble, but it would definitely have been allowed him to survive, mm. you know, it's at least the the round. Okay? Um, so a lot of rookie mistakes, but again, you know, this is MMA and before this fight, uh, Romanov did an excellent job of ground and pounding, uh, Delima. And so, you know, he could be dizzy. He could be, his senses are not there. Um, he could feel that he is just in, in a hurry. Just many, many things that could happen that would cause Delima to grapple, um, like this. Okay, so again, like that, see, he just settles more into place, and it's just not, not good. Uh, okay, a different angle, or a different little clip there. And you see, notice here, like, when Delima tries to sweep into that, like, into that, that half guard attempt with his legs, watch how his, watch how Romanov's body settles down into position. Okay, it just settles down into that position. Okay, again, the head position that he has, it's it's very, very good, superior. All right, uh, let's go look again. Nice, see, it's really good. So he's using, he's using the shoulder right here as a trap. Right there, that grip is, he's pulling the right elbow down, causing weight to be pushed into the left forearm. Um, so that right, the left shoulder of the Lima is just stuck. Uh, I've seen some videos of this breakdown and people are like, well, it's not really going to work. It's, the way how he went about it was very nice. Um, it's all about the nuance of the weight distribution with the base. Um, again, I cannot stress enough just how well he adjusted this base first before he applied the actual, you know, finishing touches to the, to the choke. Um, if you guys have a chance, check it out. UFC Fight Night Glover Teixeira versus Diego Santos. Thank you.